what is social media research? Some of you may have stumbled across this. Um, it came up um, at the start of 2014. But in January 20, 2012, Facebook, in collaboration with academic researchers, ran an experiment which ended up altering people's emotional states. Um, basically, they um, manipulated people's news feeds through um, a, an algorithm that they use regularly. And this is how you end up getting all the useful um, ads. So when I look at mine, I get a lot of dog products because I have dogs. And I post a lot about my dogs. So that's, that's sort of what pops up on my feed. Um, so what they did was they, they, they used that algorithm and they actually um, manipulated what appeared on people's news feeds. And so for some people, they got really positive and happy good news stories, which is lovely. And for other people, they didn't. They got quite negative news stories. And what they then did after that was they, they then analysed the data. And this is really where people ran into trouble. Because two academics, after an IRB review, analysed the data and published a paper. Now, <sighs> Facebook argued that, first of all, what was going on was unknown to the people because it's something they do regularly. They don't necessarily manipulate things to go positive or negative, but certainly what they actually do is manipulate what goes onto your news feed. But what, um, what really upset people was the involvement of these academics. And the IRB review actually concluded that it was allowed to go ahead because no human subjects were involved. The reason they argue this, and this is why we need to think very carefully about what constitutes human or not, is because the researchers did not see any but they saw basically a collation of data, which, they, which was not de depersonalised. It was basically the equivalent of health records, which they then analysed using a text-based um, software, which is actually used a lot in literature. And, the, the, you know, and, and what they actually found by doing this analysis was that by altering the content of the news feeds, people's emotional states were, in fact, altered. The study authors noted that given the massive scale of social networks such as Facebook, even small effects can have large aggregated consequences. So after all, an effect size of D equals 0 0.001, which is what they measured, so it's quite small, at Facebook scale is not negligible. So in early 2013, this would have corresponded to hundreds of thousands of emotion expressions in status updates every day. So these are the things that, as researchers, as ethics committees, we need to think about. And we haven't had to before. Because these researchers were simply given a data bank of stuff that had already been done, so the, the impact had already happened, and then they analysed it, and this is what came out. So what we're dealing with is, first of all, data which can be depersonalised. Second, we've got people who are dealing with corporate identities and entities who are not bound by the same ethical principles as academic researchers. And are we going to stop people researching with those people? Probably not, but we need to think about how we're actually going to manage that. And third, the scale. Because, frankly, we're talking millions of people who can potentially be influenced. And we don't have the tools to deal with that. The other issues, obviously, are the more general ones, informed consent, opportunity to withdraw, unknown impact on potentially vulnerable participants. We don't actually know if anyone did become hugely depressed as a result of this because we can't contact the people. What are the roles of the academics and what are the roles of the ethics committees? Would, as an ethics committee, you have chosen to allow this to go through? And I think, actually, to be fair, the way it was presented, most of us would have, which is why Harvard did. <laughs>